is so exalted that it is considered to be the fifth goal of human life. By awakening one's love of Godhead, one can attain the platform of conjugal love, tasting it even during the present span of life. Purport. The Mayavadi philosophers consider the highest goal of perfection to be liberation, mukti, which is the fourth perfectional platform. Generally, people are aware of four principles of life, religiosity, economic development, dharma, artha, sense gratification, karma, K-A-M-A, not K-R-M-A, karma, sense gratification and ultimately liberation, moksha. But devotional service is situated on the platform above liberation. In other words, when one is actually liberated, mukta, he can understand the meaning of love of Godhead, Krishna, Prem, while teaching Rupa Goswami, while teaching Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated, Koti mukta madhya durlabhaeka Krishna bhakta out of millions of liberated persons, one may become a devotee. Lord Krishna, the most elevated Mayavadi philosopher can rise to the platform of liberation, but Krishna Bhakti devotional service to Krishna is transcendental to such liberation. Srila Vyasadeva explains this fact in Srimad Bhagavatam 112 Dharma Projita Ketavo Tra Paramanir Matsaranam Satam Veja Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam that completely rejecting all religions which are materially motivated. The Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Srimad Bhagavatam, um, the explanation of Vedanta Sutra is meant for Paramodhidatsa those who are completely loved from jealousy. Mayavadi philosophers are jealous of the existence of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, Vedanta Sutra is not actually meant for them. They, are unnecess they unnecessarily poke their noses in the Vedanta Sutra. But they have no ability to understand it because the author of Vedanta Sutra writes in his commentary, Sri Bhagavatam, that it is meant for those who are pure in heart. Paramo Naramatsaram. If one is envious of Krishna, how can he understand Vedanta Sutra or Sri Bhagavatam? Mayavadi's primary occupation is to offend the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. For example, although Krishna demands our surrender in Bhagavad Gita, the greatest scholar and so called philosopher in India, has protested that it is not to Krishna that we have to surrender. Therefore, he is envious. Since my values, uh, since my values of all different descriptions are envious, Krishna they have no scope to understand the meaning of the Danta Sutra. Even if they were on the liberate platform, as they falsely claim, here Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami repeats the statement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that love of Krishna is beyond the state of liberation. <coughs> Amagena Timarandasya Tinanjana Sulakaya Chaksura Militam Yena Tishmane Shri Gurave Namaha Durgame Parimendasya Skalapate Katibuho Svakri Parimstadanina Shanta Shanta Valambanam so, I've written a few notes here. Um, in the purport, so Prabhupada, it's, it's quite an interesting translation actually because it's never mentioned there are five types of liberation, there's only four. And this sort of liberation, it's a, it's a sort of wheel, it's like a cyclic wheel that goes around Dharma, Arta, Kama and Moksha just to um, that people develop uh, a religious attitude and from that religion 
um, you get uh, economic development. Prabhupada always used to quote the founding fathers, you know, the founding fathers that they sailed in these three boats from England and they went to America and then they started the Western civilization in America. So first of all, these were pilgrims, you know, they were belonging to some sort of sect, they wanted to get away from persecution, so they sailed to America. So then, from there came economic development, and from economic development, when everything is sort of, you can, um, when everything is stable, there's time to uh, relax, then you get sense gratification, and then from sense gratification comes frustration and there's liberation. So these are usually called the four cycles uh, of perfection, and that's that's it, right? That's how it is. So, in the um, uh, according to the Vedas, um, people used to pursue these four paths. So the religiosity they used to study the Vedas for all the instructions on how to conduct sacrifices and all the offerings properly, and that would be elevated to the higher realms, Janaloka, Jana Tapaloka, Mahaloka, uh, by the dint of their um, performance. Uh, and then, of course, economic development for those who pursue economic development, and they did according to injunctions of Vedas, they give in charity, they um, honour the Brahmanas, and they honour the forefathers, so many different sort of things. Then they also get elevated to the higher realms uh, upon the end of their life. They can achieve perfection. It's actually said that if one remains a perfect Grihasta for 100 births, he gets to be Lord Brahma, the ultimate being on this, um, in this universe, probably in the next universe. And so then we have, like, we've got Dharma, Art, Economic Development. Third one is sense gratification. So everybody likes to um, enjoy um, their, their, their senses, the propensity, to, to, um, the working senses, um, is it eating, sleeping, uh, they like to see uh, uh, through the eyes, the nose, the ears and the mouth. Taste, touch, sound and hearing. Right? So everybody likes to hear nice things and whatever. So that sense gratification is also um, delineated in the Vedas how to do it properly. So if you do it properly, you don't meet with any disaster, subsequent disaster that comes afterwards. So then also if you follow the Karmakanda section of the Vedas, you get elevated to heavenly planets just by you know, enjoying in a proper manner. Right? Then of course there's a frustration of all because there's a repeated cycle of birth and death and you die and you get sick and everything. You so say, this is, this is not right, this is not where it's at, so you look for liberation. So that's the natural cycle that people look for. And in uh, most cases that liberation people are looking for is moksha, as Prabhupada describes. That's According to philosophy, Sankaracharya, that you merge with this Supreme. You get that liberation from all your bodily requirements and whatever that you uh, become freed from all that and get moksha. But then here we're talking about the fifth goal. And so Sri Chaitanya mentioned is that the fifth goal is bhakti yoga. That is prema bhakti, the highest love. And there's a quote here, and it's also in the Bhagavad Gita, that quote is given, Manusyanam Sahasrisu Kastid Yadati Siddhaya Yadatamapi Siddhanam Kastid Mam Vedi Tattva Tadat out of many thousands uh, uh, among men, uh, a few may look for that perfection, right? Um, and if those who have attained perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So that is the truth to know that Krishna is the source of everything. So Krishna, he's beyond the three stages of realization, Brahmati, Paramatmati, and he's Bhagavan, beyond the two stages of self realization He's beyond the Brahman effulgence, the merging, and he's beyond Paramatma, um, and then he's the Bhagavan. 
So the Gyanis and the Yogis, they sort of seek out Paramatma realization or Brahman realization. And the impersonalists, um, they reject the form of God. They, for them, the ultimate source is Brahman, the source of everything that is um, oneness with the Supreme. So therefore their relationship is like all Maya. It's all material. One, one with the Supreme is that we, we merge with the Supreme Brahman. So anything that happens here in this material world is Maya, illusion. So then particularly relationships, the relationships between men and women, that's also illusion. So therefore if they've drawn that conclusion, they also draw the conclusion that the, um, the Supreme Lord, uh, in his relationship, the uh, Supreme Lord has, uh, also has uh, consorts, wives, like Lakshmi and Narayan, Lakshmi and Narayan, Ram, Sita and Rama, and Radha and Krishna. So they conclude that that relationship is also material, right? So they've misidentified, they've mistaken that material situation as being temporary and illusory. The fact of the matter is, as uh, living entities, whether whoever you are, your Mayavadi or whatever, uh, everybody is looking for that Ananda Mayo um, Vyasat, that, that pleasure. Everybody is looking for this pleasure. So uh, ultimately, the pleasure is um, um, the ultimate pleasure is love, right? Within the heart, you look for pleasure, and the highest pleasure you can attain is this love within. So everybody is looking for love in one sense or another. There's so much songs about I'm looking for love you know it's just someone's lonely they're looking for love even though, um, so that is their inherent in all living beings because we're all these living beings we're eternal souls and we do have a loving nature within the soul but when we forget that we're the soul and we think we're this body then that love within we start looking without you know, we look, we look without the body. Where is the love? You know, we see it in attraction, an ephemeral attraction for the opposite sex, or we see in so many different, like, tastes and varieties of objects in this material world, and we become attached to material pleasure. Like that. So, um, of course, this material pleasure is temporary, so whatever we have in this body, ultimately, uh, when this body is destroyed, we have to give it up. In um, in the history of uh, you know, the history of uh, the world, we've had um, the Vedas to actually guide us in our search. So this is where we get those four stages of uh, perfection. So Vyasadeva actually wrote it down for the benefit of living entities who are bewildered. So this is a process how you can actually slowly work your way up and then attain that realization that the ultimate source of pleasure comes from within. So we're all looking for that love. Ultimately, that love, what is it? It is Krishna. He's that love, actually. Because why? Because Krishna is the source of all pleasure. He's the source of everything. So we have to look for Krishna. We have to find him. So that is the search. So um, then also uh, scriptures, they declare that, um, uh, that ultimate source, he has two aspects. That is a male and a female aspect, just like the ultimate love. Uh, Lakshmi and Narayan people mistake that. So that interaction between male and female is a source, source of the highest love. It is the goal of all love. So um, therefore, when we have Lakshmi in the Narayan and Ram Siddha and Ram Krishna, we have spiritual love. Right? So when we talk about Radha and Krishna, that is the highest because Krishna is the source of all the incarnations and he's the source of all material worlds. So, of course, we have uh, Radha, she's the feminine aspect of the Supreme Absolute Truth, the uh, God Krishna, Godhead, Personality of Godhead Krishna. So, Radharani, 
Srimadhi Radharani, who we see on the altar there next to Krishna, she's the uh, mother of all living beings. She's actually the goddess of all the goddesses of fortune, and she's the mother and Krishna is the seed giving father. Aham bija pradapita. Okay? So, <coughs> pardon me. So, Radha and Krishna, that um, they exhibit the supreme love. So Radha bestows supreme love for her worshipful Krishna and Krishna is the supreme object of love. So Krishna is the source of all love. This Radha and Krishna relationship is the source of all love. So all the love exists in the spiritual world and the material world uh, comes from Radha and Krishna. So therefore, when we look for love, we're looking for that perfect love that is there exhibited in the spiritual world. But um, when we come to the material world, that love becomes a perverted reflection. It just becomes a reflection of that real love. It's just like you look in the river or you look in the water and you see a broken image of yourself like that. So that is there compared to the real spiritual love, which is um, forever and it's eternal. So. Um, Radha and Krishna, uh, they're the source of that love. And Radha, Radharani, she's the compassionate nature of Krishna. So she's the supreme attractor of Krishna. She's the most merciful. She's a loving, uh, forgiving aspect of Godhead. So Radha and Krishna combine the person of Godhead. So you don't see Krishna without Radha. He's completely attached. Uh, to Radha's beauty. She's the ultimate attractor of everyone. So if we want to actually find Krishna, we pray to Radha because she's the most compassionate, she's the most merciful and because um, she gives you shelter of Krishna, just like we pray to our mother, right? Uh, just like she's our mother. We don't pray to our mother. <laughs> she's like our mother, right? And she cares for us. So she gives us shelter. So then, when Krishna sees that love that is coming uh, from the living entity, uh, he perceives any love that we show, then he becomes attracted also. So that's the waking of the heart. So this is how love uh, begins, uh, spiritual love begins. So Krishna, uh, he's the supreme attractor. So that real love, we have to search it out and we have to find it um, but through approaching Radha and Krishna. Uh, so that is Prema Bhakti. Of course, um, when we approach that love, then we, get, uh, we can get Prem, just like um, it's said here that uh, in this material world, there is, um, if we can sort through the material world and find that spiritual attraction, we can get to the ultimate goal. And that uh, can happen in this lifetime also. It is so, it's, it's said here, it happens, it can happen uh, through this process of bhakti yoga. So that is the goal of life, actually. We're very fortunate that we've been given this goal here in this age of Kali Yuga because um, when you look about the yogis, the austerities of the yogis that they performed in the Vedas for many thousands of years, Banu Maharaj was saying that you know, the yogis that live in the caves in Himalayas, they stop eating and they let the hair grow long and then they just are completely absorbed in meditation and nothing else for, for many, many years. So um, this is a very austere path. But for us, the austerity is just simply understanding uh, the nature of Radha and Krishna and following the instructions uh, uh, of Bhakti Yoga, which is a very simple process, just the chanting of the Hare Krishna and Rama. It's been made simple for us in Kali Yuga because we can't do any of all that. So, um, Prabhupada says here, Dharma... Projita, this is Srimad Bhagavatam, it's a famous, it's the second sloka of the Bhagavatam where he, um, uh, it's declared that we're going to kick out all the uh, cheating religions that actually people are being misled by this. So the Mayavadis, um, they're, um, they're in a situation where they're 
practicing their religion, but the, um, they still have material desires. So Dharma Project, it says that actually propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are pure in heart, uh, distinguish, distinguish illusion from reality and such truths are false misery. So you have to be pure in heart, so you have to be free from the tinge of material miseries. But the Mayavadis, because they're actually jealous of Krishna, then they've got that uh, tinge of materialism in their heart. It's still tainted. Just like the Mayavadis say, I'm Krishna, you're Krishna, we're all Krishna. Uh, uh, we're all, yeah, we're all supreme person. I'm God, I'm God, you God. We're all God. Then, oh, Krishna's God too. Hmm, yeah, they scratch their chin on that one. You know, they don't want to accept that Krishna. Uh, what to speak that Krishna is a supreme person? Now that you've got it, that he's the supreme person. So, this is the sort of shortfall in knowledge that they have. And so, um, uh, Srila Prabhupada says that because of this envy, that uh, people. Um, misleading everybody it's called the cheated the cheaters and the cheated so Prabhupada quotes here some great personality in India who was like the ultimate cheater ultimate philosopher and um, uh, so scholar and philosopher I don't know whether his Maharaj might know who the name is but it might have been may have been Gandhi he made some comments about Gandhi it wasn't Gandhi no nah. But some of these philosophers, they come up with this philosophy that, okay, the Bhagavad Gita, um, what, what it's really saying is that the Pandavas are the five senses and Krishna is the mind and the super soul is the intelligence and they put it all together, but they preclude Krishna. But actually it clearly says in the Bhagavad Gita that um, uh, Krishna in so many places like 7-6 so I am the source of all material and spiritual worlds I am their creation and dissolution uh, um, uh, I am the uh, supreme personality of Godhead Aham uh, creator of everything uh, everything rests on me like pearls are strung on the thread so Krishna says that, so they have to deny, no, 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 no that, that doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that Krishna's God. You know? That's what all the Bhagavad Gita is all about, that's why Srila Prabhupada wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is, right, because previously to that, before Prabhupada came to the West, all these Bhagavad Gitas were actually um, talking about Mayavadi, um, about Mayavadi uh, philosophy. Um, nobody actually translated it directly. So when Prabhupada came, he called the Bhagavad Gita this because he delineated actually Krishna's supreme personality of Godhead. So um, by the process of bhakti, uh, we study the Srimad Bhagavatam because Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. It sort of hasn't got any tainted in it. There's no speculation in it. Um, so by studying the Srimad Bhagavatam and following the process of bhakti which begins the with the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and the process of rendering service to Krishna we uh, start on this path of, a self -re of God realization and we can attain the highest platform uh, we take the shelter of Srimati Radharani because they actually the devotes aspire to become Lord Chaitanya said when we become dust on the dust on the dust that the servant of the servant of the servant many times removed the supreme person of God it and the ultimate servant is Radharani she's always thinking how to serve Krishna and there are so many gopis there the Manjaris who are thinking how can I serve Radharani in the spiritual world, in Vrindavan, where there's Krishna and there's Radharani, the gopis don't see Krishna, they just see Radharani. What does Radharani want? And then those gopis have so many other gopis removed, like the spiritual world, like this beautiful lotus petal with Krishna and Radha there, and the eight principal gopis, 108 principal gopis around the lotus petals, and lotus petals under that have uh, another like 1,008 gopis and then there's more lotus petals under that with so many millions and millions it's uh, described from a Samhita so many millions and um, trillions of coward boys and girls Sahasra Koti um, 
We chant every morning. What is it? Um, what's the first um, aphorism? Uh, what's? Huh? It's in Tamani Prakara, Sadhusu, Kalpa Riksha, Laksha, Ritasu, Surabi, Abhi Palayantam, Lakshmi, Lakshmi is the Kelly, Sahasrata, many, many thousands and millions. So that's the spiritual world. They're all servants of Krishna and they're all looking at each other for service, and the principal gopis are looking at Radharani. Because if Radharani is pleased, then Krishna becomes pleased. And it automatically, all of that pleasure is transferred to all the gopis in that uh, spiritual world. They all feel that same pleasure just because Krishna becomes pleased. Radharani transfers that pleasure to everybody. So similarly, when we please Krishna here, somehow Radharani Krishna becomes attracted to us and we please the Srimati Radharani, so then we actually get a taste of that pleasure and that spiritual pleasure is just ultimately beyond anything that's uh, you know the distorted material pleasures material world we can get a taste so we're very fortunate to have uh, an opportunity because it's said Ramanda Brahmate Bhagavan Kona Bhagavan Jiva Guru Krishna Prasada Praya Bhakti Lata Bija so here uh, it's very very difficult to attain this we're just traveling everywhere we're doing all this dharma you know we're doing the uh, uh, karma and the art all this um, you know economic development all the religiosity we're following all that but that's going around in a circle, repeated birth, and then we're going up to that planet. We get the benefit of that. We go to the higher planets. We go to Gyanaloka, we go to Mahaloka, Tapaloka. And we spend millions of years there uh, in a very, very nice situation. Don't get sick, don't get old, very much blissful. But ultimately, we have to come back again, do it all over again. Right? So this is Brahmanda, Brahmate, Kona Bhagavan Then we go on to the Brahmanda, we go on back in there, come back again. And then we slip up, whoops, we made a mistake, we did the wrong thing in the karma kanda section later, then we go down, you know. We go down to those planets there that we sort of uh, dread, <laughs> right? And we come back up here and try again, you know. So this is going on. So, Guru Krishna Prasada Pai, Bhakti Lada Beach, so we get the mercy of the Guru. That's a very, very rare thing, Prasada Pai. So, Bhakti Lada, that sets the goal of devotional service going. So, if we get the chance to get some Bhakti Lada Beach, that little seed of devotional service, we should grab hold of it and cling to it because we don't know where we're going to float for the rest of the material existence in this world. So, that sets us onto the path back to Godhead. Oh. Finished here, done, done. So anybody got any questions or comments? Or misunderstandings or um, apprehensions? Get the ball on. Prabhu, you, you mentioned earlier in the lecture, yeah, uh, approaching Radha and Krishna, and that, that process is through Gauranitai. Can you talk a little bit about that? Through Gauranitai. How we approach, how we indirectly approach Radha and Krishna, rather than directly. Okay, right. So, thank you very much for that question, because obviously this... Um, statement that Mahaprabhu made, it's a wonderful, very, very wonderful statement that he's made it right at the end of the discussion between him and the ultimate Mayavadi Prakasananda Saraswati and he's telling the love of God is so exalted is considered to be the fifth goal of human life. By waking one's love of God here, one can attain the platform of conjugal love, taste it. So he's talking about his um, love for Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the incarnation of Krishna himself. And of course, he's, because of that, he's uh, said to be the most merciful incarnation. So, um, I should have spent a lot of time on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, sorry about that, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's given us this process of bhakti yoga. Before that, there was, the doors were closed. Mayavadi 
philosophy and Buddhist philosophy was just everywhere, it was prevalent. So this is where he's gone to the heart of Varanasi where all the Mayavadis live and he's taken on all the Mayavadis, the greatest Mayavadis. He's defeated uh, them in their philosophy and he's establishing the seed of bhakti. So Lord Chaitanya, uh, we're following in the footsteps, we're in the Brahma, Gaudiya, Madhva, Sampradaya, right? So Gaudiya, uh, it's, uh, Gaudiya means uh, golden. Gaudiya, what's Gaudiya? It's Lord Chaitanya. Isn't it? Lord Chaitanya Sampradaya. So he started this um, um, Sampradaya, which means this. Um, oh, really? This uh, type, this process of uh, achieving um, uh, achieving self-realization. So it comes from uh, ultimately. It's uh, this process of love God, it, of course it's eternal and he's revived it and he's given it to us in a very, very simple form for this age of Kali Yuga. He's, uh, he said just simply chant Hare Krishna and Rama and we follow his example because before this he just uh, took sannyas here and he was having this conversation before taking sannyas. He studied all of these Vedas that we talk about, the Dharma, the Arta, the Rig, the Sama, the Yaju. He, he knew all the grammar, he knew all the Vedas and everything. And he was the first and foremost scholar in India. At that point, I was defeating all the other Digvijayas, all the different scholars, right? He knocked them over, right? Bowled them over, right? Because, of course, he's sprinkled so I've got it. So, once he'd done that, and he took, uh, um, took sannyas, he rejected all that. And when he took uh, initiation from his spiritual master, he used this as an opportunity to say that my spiritual master said, I'm a fool for studying all of this. I'm a fool, you know nothing. The thing that really is the essence of all of this is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So he inaugurated that. So Prakashananda and them, they were into studying all these Vedas and everything. That's what it was all about, the Sarap Bhasya and uh, the Vedanta and all the commentaries and the debating all that. And they go, why is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanting like that, like a sentimental, all his disciples are dancing around like madmen. Why are they doing this? He's a sannyasi. He should be studying. That is the goal of all. So he straightened them out. So by um, defeating them and their philosophy, he also was establishing the principles of bhakti as being the highest goal, bhakti yoga. So it's through him. So, um, and it's through him and through his subsequent disciples, Rupa and Sanatan, six Goswamis. We're also known as Rupa Nugas because we're following in the footsteps of all of Lord Chaitanya's um, uh, lineage. So, and then of course, <coughs> um, Lord Chaitanya came with the Panchatattva and his um, uh, associate, Lord Nityananda, also it's like incarnation of Krishna and Balaram. And so it's said that Lord Chaitanya is most merciful, even more merciful is Lord Nityananda. So uh, in this uh, in this incarnation, in this uh, mood, Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, so he had no consort. So he was lamenting um, the um, separation of love between Radha and Krishna because he was actually an incarnation of both. So therefore, um, he introduced us to this Prima Bhakti. So um, that's what my understanding is. Thank you very much. All good? Jai. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Uh,